traffic. Thank you all for uniting against racism with us today. My name is Ashley. Growing up in a small white farm community in central Iowa, I was raised to believe that we are all equal, regardless of the color of our skin. Today, I know that is not true. Our nation, from the beginning, was founded on the inhumane oppression and slaughter of the indigenous nation. Built strong by the enslavement of black people and continues to allow systemic division by race for the benefit of white power and control. Why do we the people continue to allow these systems to be in place by hiding our nation's brutal history. We need to educate our children and ourselves about what being an American means for all of its people. They need to know why they live in a community where their neighbors have the same color skin as they do. Why black men, women, and children are being killed in their homes and on the streets by people who are sworn to serve and protect our community. They need to know that white people are not the native people to this country, but how we became the majority. As white people, we feel safe in our homes and on the streets. Yet in our own communities, native children are shot by police and native women are raped in jail. In the last few years, almost 100 environmental regulations have been rolled back. How can we or our children begin to save our planet from toxic chemicals and microplastics that are clogging up our air and water systems and making us all sick when we cannot even protect our people? Maybe Jason Perot or Trayvon Martin would have discovered a cure for cancer if they would have been lifted up and raised in a system where all people are welcome. When will we say enough is enough? Until our systems change, education, churches, governments, and the police, the embedded racist oppression governing our lives will not end. And we will never achieve equality. This movement is not new, but it is gaining momentum. Only by uniting as white people and standing together with Anishinaabe and blacks as one people throughout the nation will our voice be heard and systems can begin to be reformed for the benefit of future generations. Thank you all for being here. I would now like to introduce Laughing Fox from the Red Cliff Band of Lake Superior Ojibwe. Oh, you good, Maganak. Hello to all my relatives. Bape wa gush in the Shinikash. Laughing Fox is my name. Iswabi Kong in Dunjaba. Red Cliff is where I'm from. Nindamigazi in New Dame. I'm from, uh, or uh, the Eagle Clan. Um, uh, it makes my heart feel really good to see how many people have come out in support and unity against uh, racism. I was taught by my elders to speak in uh, Ojibwe when I introduced myself. And um, at one time, that language was outlawed. Um, the religion and the culture of the indigenous people of Turtle Island North America, South America, Canada. Um, the culture has been suppressed. And uh, it wasn't until uh, 1978 that the native um, was uh, granted by the US government uh, freedom of religion. It wasn't until 1968 that the native was uh, granted by this government uh, freedom of speech. You know, 1978, that's only uh, 40 years ago that uh, 
natives weren't be able, we weren't able to practice uh, our religion, our culture, and practice our identity. <coughs> I'd like to thank uh, Chief Buffalo for being the first one to stand up against institutional racism from the U.S. government, who made a trip to Washington, D.C. to meet with President Fillmore. He was 94 years old and he made the trip. Uh, he met with President Fillmore and signed the Treaty of 1854, allowing the indigenous population to remain in this area. Now, even though we signed treaties, um, we have been fighting for our treaty rights ever since. And uh, along, uh, fast forward 100 years, you know, to the 1950s in, uh, in Bayfield, um, where Native Americans still weren't allowed in certain establishments in Bayfield. Um, my grandmother and her grandmother had to conform and had to fit into a society that rejected them. And uh, they had no voice. And I feel that as I stand here speaking, in a way I speak for my ancestors and say the things that they could not. Um, we have a lot of uh, historical trauma within uh, the reservations. And the only way that I feel we can deal with this historical trauma is if we talk about it and get it out in the open on the level that we can all understand. Um, the Tribal Council have put out a statement in regards to the murder of George um, Floyd. This is from uh, the Red Cliff Tribal Council. Red Cliff Tribal Council statement on the murder, murder of George Floyd, June 10th. The Red Cliff Tribal Council stands in solidarity with the black community in the wake of the murder of George Floyd at the hands of Minneapolis police. For far too long, black and native people have been disappropriately subject to unwarranted violence at the hands of police. Many of our tribal members have experienced this firsthand. While recent events have now given the issue center stage in the national conversation, many of our tribal members realize the only thing that has truly changed is that the curtain has been lifted because of our digital age and the ability of every day citizens to record such reprehensible conduct by those sworn to protect and serve. We encourage and support lawful protests and demonstrations designed to shed light on the police brutality, and we support the demonstration demilitarization of police and a return to community policing. We stand in support of all lawful protests and demonstrations designed to end police brutality against people of color. As a nation, we cannot say all lives matter until Native and Black lives matter. Miigwech the Red Club Travel Council.